Thank you everyone for joining the webinar, Exploring the CELPIP Test, a Comprehensive Introduction. Today, we're excited to have CELPIP with us to overview the key details regarding the test, how it is delivered, and how you can prepare, um, and the role this test will take in your immigration journey. Language proficiency is a key element in the Canadian immigration process, and CELPIP tests are one of Canada's leading general um, English tests for immigration, citizenship, and professional designation, and is also accepted by RCC for the student direct stream. CELPIP works to make test taking accessible globally and to help test takers prepare for success and is specifically formulated with a focus on Canadian immigration. So we're very happy to welcome Anna Baxter and Ivan Petrov. Anna Baxter is the Manager of Business Development for Prometrics Language Acquisition Portfolio for Eastern Canada, Latin America, and Europe, Middle East, and Africa. Um, a consummate language assessment professional, Anna is intimately familiar with the candidate's journey through her extensive experience as an English as a second language instructor and academic advisor in South and North America. Before joining Prometric to expand the reach of the company's language assessment programs, Anna spent years working with learners as an English language proficiency and English for academic purposes instructor with a comprehensive English program at the School of Continuing Studies at the University of Toronto. Anna holds a BA in linguistics, linguistics from the Pontificia Universidad Catolica del Ecuador and a TESL, TFL slash CCA designation from the Escuela Politecnica Nacional in Ecuador. And uh, my apologies if I mispronounced any of those. No, that was good. Names. <laughs> well done. Thank you. Um, we also have Ivan Petrov joining us, and he is the manager of business development for, for Prometrics Language Acquisition Portfolio for Western Canada, the United States, and Asia. As manager of business development, Ivan supports the assessment mandates of academic institutions, government, and strategic stakeholders, focusing on improving meaningful and equitable outcomes for institutions and learners. In the past, Ivan served as an account director and manager of academic relations for Prometrics English language and prior learning assessment programs and spent years working in experimental learning and ed tech, focusing on the US academic ecosystem, public policy and academia. Ivan holds a BA from the University of Toronto and an MA from the University of Toronto's Monk School of Global Affairs. So uh, thanks for joining us, Ivan. Um, Lovely to be here. Thank you. Amazing. So our speakers, our speakers will present for around 30 minutes, and then we will move to a question and answer period. Many of you submitted questions prior to this webinar, um, and we're going to try to get to as many of those as possible. But please feel free to, to send as many questions as you have regarding the self test in the chat below. We have a team of moderators that are going to pick out some questions for us to answer in the question and answer period. Um, and please refrain from sharing any personal information as the chat is public. Um, lastly, know that the webinar is being recorded. So following the webinar, you'll receive a recording of the slides via a recording and the slides via email. Um, just a quick reminder before I pass it off to CELPIP to begin their presentation. Um, Please, please make sure to not share any personal information in the chat as a reminder and continue to ask your questions in the chat during the presentation and during the question answer period. I promise we'll get to as many as we can. Um, so without further ado, uh, we're going to pass it off to CELPIP to begin their presentation. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Riley, for a very, very kind introduction. Hello again, everyone, and welcome to this um, CELPIP overview. Uh, we're particularly grateful to all of you who are joining us from various locations worldwide. Um, and many thanks again to CIC News for bringing us all together. Um, what we're going to aim to achieve here today is to um, chart your path to success on the CELPIP test. We know that um, any such test taking endeavor is a lot of work um, and the effort is commendable. We're with you um, in a way. We hope that this session will be the first step on the road to that success for many of you. And it will leave you with enough pointers 
but also points of contact and access to available materials that will empower your journey. Um, to that end, um, this session will consist of us walking through the basics of the test, the reasons why you may choose to take it, the test format itself, and importantly, some of the proven strategies and skills we would recommend. We'll split the sections between a general overview, which I will cover, and then Anna being a much better expert when it comes to the vicissitudes and intricacies of the test, will take you through those um, strategies and skills we recommend. Finally, we will point you to the available materials and answer any questions that remain, including those we may have sparked during the presentation. Um, to kind of give everyone um, a notion of what CELPIP is, in case you're wondering, it stands for the Canadian English Language Proficiency Index Program. And the first letters here are the most important as in Canadian English language. The reason why I outline, I outline this is that it is the only all Canadian exam accepted for permanent residency or citizenship applications. Riley already mentioned this, but the point here is that this is a fully computer delivered testing program, uh, which assesses all four English language skills. Importantly, it also focuses on functional proficiency, which means that it assesses a test taker's ability to use English in day-to-day -day situations. Um, while some of these situations may involve an academic context or a workplace context, it's important to understand that CELPIP is not a test of academic or business English. It features a wide range of levels of formality, um, with some being quite casual, such as, you know, reading a, an email from a family member or listening to a chat between coworkers, while others may be more formal, such as responding to a survey from a city government, for example. And again, also important to note, CELPIP was developed by language experts at the University of British Columbia. And you'll see uh, as we progress through the slides why this is important and why we take pride in the fact that it was developed specifically there. Now, moving on to take a closer look at the different uses for CELPIP General and CELPIP General LS. Um, as I mentioned a moment ago, the CELPIP General is used predominantly for proof of English language proficiency for those applying for permanent residency in Canada. It is also accepted by a few other organizations, which we will outline uh, and direct you to uh, reference those uh, on our website. So if you're applying to work in a certain sector, for instance, and they ask for English proficiency, then you can revert the question back and ask if they accept CELPIP general. Um, this test also assesses, as I said, all four um, English language skills, so reading, writing, listening, and speaking. And therefore, it takes about three hours to complete. Um, on the other hand, the self of general LS tests only listening and speaking, and therefore takes about a minute, um, an hour and 10 minutes, and is mainly used as proof of general English proficiency when you are applying for citizenship. Now, a few of the reasons why you might consider taking the CELPIP. First and foremost, availability. We got excited at the beginning of the call about some of the locations that were coming through and the fact that we now have locations open to serve those test takers. Um, there are over 140 CELPIP test centers across Canada and internationally. Uh, new test centers are being opened as we speak, so it's always a good idea to check frequently. And again, we will give you the resources um, to know uh, the closest one to your actual location. Um, and it's also important to know that there are weekly test dates across Canada and internationally, including evenings and weekends. So we aim to make life easier for folks that are about to embark on this test taking journey. Um, again, we'll give you the, um, the links 
so that you can check those uh, times and dates on your own. And within Canada, because I saw that a bunch of you folks are actually in Canada, um, again, a, a very generous spread in terms of availability. Um, 18 locations in BC, um, eight in Alberta, 20 plus in Ontario, three in Saskatchewan and Manitoba each, and um, New Brunswick, two in Quebec and uh, Nova Scotia, and one in Newfoundland and Labrador. It's possible that we now have opened a few more since we updated the slide. So again, uh, important to check availability in real time. Um, Another group of reasons why you would consider CELPIP, well, it is the Canadian test, meaning that um, it's the only Canadian English language proficiency test that was developed specifically within Canada for Canadian use and approved for immigration and professional designation um, by the government. As we mentioned, it is also computer delivered which also means that it is done in one sitting. And I think that's also important, um, as in you don't have to schedule a separate uh, date where you have to go back and do your speaking uh, component. Quick online results available only in just four to five days, accepted by the IRCC, as Riley mentioned, and as we've discussed as well, the CELPIP is the officially recognized uh, test by Immigration, Refugees, and Citizenship Canada for proof of English proficiency. What we also pride ourselves with is the wealth and breadth of free study materials that are available directly to you as you um, register to take the exam. These include practice tests, videos, um, online information sessions, and online preparation courses. And finally, downloadable score reports, a sample of which I will show you in a moment. Uh, so these are PDF score reports available for download directly in your CELPIP account. Um, moving on to diving ever more deeper um, into the specifics of the tests and, and, and why we think that you should consider um, taking it. Um, all four skills, as we said, are assessed using a computer, um, which again allows you to do it in all in one sitting, so super convenient. Unlike other tests, uh, CELPIP allows that uh, flexibility. Um, after your speaking responses are recorded by the computer, you do not need to speak face-to-face -face with the rater, which I find also very useful personally because um, many test takers might feel a little apprehensive when they're talking directly to another human. Um, whereas in this case, um, you are not doing that. So in a way, it's an easier and much calmer overall experience. Hopefully that's also um, a better and, and more appropriate way to measure your English proficiency as well. Um, with the reading section, you can actually see the text and the questions at the same time. And you'll see later in the presentation why this is important and why it actually makes the test taking experience a little bit easier and less apprehensive. Um, with the writing, there are word count and spell check functions uh, when you type. And you can also have access to other basic editing functions like uh, cut, copy, and paste. So in a way, mimicking very closely the experience of, again, language used through a computer during your day-to-day -day life in Canada. When it comes to the listening component, the headset allows you to adjust the volume to suit your needs. One of the things that I heard um, from test takers is that as they practice, it's important for them to actually practice in environments in which there is a little bit of background noise because at a test center that may be the case if you're surrounded by other people while taking the test. So therefore the ability to, I know it sounds um, self-explanatory and simple, but the ability to change the volume actually makes a lot of sense and, and you have that at your disposal. And um, finally, um, timers. Uh, test takers of all levels, myself included, 
find the time constraints on a test very stressful at times. And so this test has uh, timer devices on all the screens, helping um, test takers know exactly how much time they have left to complete questions. Um, I already mentioned that it was developed in Canada, specifically at the University of British Columbia. But now um, I'll tell you a little bit more about the ways in which it is also um, in different ways more Canadian. So um, it uses Canadian accents in the listening passages and North American English vocabulary throughout the test, which means that you won't hear any difficult to understand expressions from other forms of English, such as British or Australian accents. Um, this works particularly well if you've already lived and worked in Canada for a little while. That means that everything you hear on the test will sound very familiar to you. Um, but I also think that in some respects, even for those who haven't had experience living in Canada, it's a very good indicator of what you are going to experience when you're here. So again, um, two benefits here. One, on the one hand, if you have lived here, then fantastic, that's going to sound familiar to you. And if you haven't, then you are getting a really good snippet of what that language use is going to be like. And therefore, when Anna and I talk to you about the uh, prep materials that are available, if you spend a little bit of time getting to know the test and the practice tests that are included with the prep, then you actually get into it and, and then begin to um, familiarize yourself with the actual Canadian accent. Um, as I mentioned earlier, here is a snippet of the organizations that um, um, approve the CELPIP and recognize the CELPIP. And in fact, uh, as I mentioned in the onset, it's important for you to uh, speak with your, if, if you are applying through a particular organization, um, to speak to them and actually ensure that CELPIP is A, um, approved for that particular application and whether or not they have a particular um, score that you should be aiming for. Um, again, there is a more comprehensive list of organizations that we will share um, the link for. Um, very briefly, uh, in terms of another use for the CELPIP test, um, we think of CELPIP and Kale, which is another product that we uh, manage, but they both were uh, adopted within the SDS stream, which is the student direct stream program um, called SDS Canada sometimes. It's effectively um, a fast track program that processes study permits uh, for certain international students. And when I say international students, these are uh, folks who come from countries like Brazil, China, Colombia, Costa Rica, India, Morocco, Pakistan, Peru, the Philippines, Senegal, um, and Vietnam, just to name a few. Again, um, we're outlining here the fact that CELPIP can be used for other purposes, and one such uh, purpose is the SDS program. I mentioned earlier about the um, necessity to understand the types of scoring that your actual application will require. Um, so this is an example of the uh, score descriptors used to um, assess language um, ability through CELPIP. All of this is aligned with the Canadian language benchmarks which also happens to be the level or the benchmark that aligns all other language tests. So it's easy to follow this. Obviously, um, it has 13 levels. Uh, if you include the minimal proficiency, which chances are nobody's going to ever uh, score. Um, and a lot of the times you'll be looking to score something in the order of six, seven or eight, um, depending on the um, the rigor of the application in, in question. Um, and finally, as I promised earlier, this is an example of what the official score report would look like. 
what's important to note here is that some organizations would require um, the um, to, to specify an average score for score users. And so now we have that ability. It's not just the generic um, score that just gives you one individual score. It's also an average that can be um, printed on the official score report. And um, most importantly, these are available within three to four days, in most cases, directly in your Destin account. Um, with this, I'm going to pass it on to Anna to kind of give us a snippet of the um, features and format of the test, but also, again, more importantly, the strategies and skills that you can deploy in ensuring that you uh, get to the highest possible score. Um, with that, Anna, the floor is yours. <laughs> Thank you, Yvonne. I'm now going to focus on the overview of the four sections. And before I get started, I just wanted to briefly touch upon the difference between CellPip General and CellPip LS. And as uh, Yvonne has already mentioned, CellPip General can be used towards the um, permanent residency application, which offers four sections of listening, reading, writing, and speaking, and the cost of the test is 280 Canadian dollars. Um, and it will take about uh, three hours to do. And CellPIP General LS is specifically for the Canadian citizenship application, where you're only required to do the listening and speaking section, which is what LS stands for. And the cost is 195, and the test is a little over an hour to do. All right, so let's begin then. We will start with the listening section, which takes about 55 minutes or less, and there will be six parts. So things to note uh, in this section is that you will listen to the audio passage only once, and the questions will come after. So it's important to take efficient notes. This is something that I'll be repeating throughout. <laughs> and you will be given a paper and pen in the testing center. I know for myself, writing things down does help me remember information. So when preparing, practice this. Uh, there will also be a timer on the screen, which I know um, Yvonne already mentioned, and this will help you to manage your time. Another important point is that the information will gradually get more complex in each part. And it's designed to be this way, and it's basically to determine someone's level. So don't worry about that. So in part one, for example, you might notice that the questions and the information is easier and a little bit more comfortable. But by the time you get to part six, the vocabulary will be more descriptive and at a higher level. Now, this is what the screen will look like after you have finished uh, the listening audio passage. There will always be four options for you to choose from. Even if you're not sure about the answer, never leave it blank. This is one of the things we're always <laughs> repeating and telling people to do. You still have a chance to get the correct answer. So you can also see the timer on the right-hand corner. And if you've responded to a question or the questions on the page, and if you're satisfied with your responses, you can move on to the next page. You actually don't need to wait till the time is up. So this is something that um, you have as a benefit doing this on the computer. And this is one of the great things where if you are comfortable, you're able to respond, just go to the next page. And sometimes you might end up finishing the test quicker. But if you want to take your time, go at your own pace, then you can wait till the time is up and automatically it will take you to the next page. In some parts, you will hear conversations between two or three people. And in other parts, there may be a conversation, well, not a conversation, there will be only one person talking. And it could be, for example, about a news report. So 
each section, each part will be different. And now things to note to help you to prepare for the test. Um, one of the things, especially when you're listening to information, are the pauses, the intonations, the stressed words. This will help you notice about maybe what the other person is feeling, what the speaker is trying to tell you. It will help you understand certain details. So this is very useful to be able to capture some of that information that will be important in the test. And you can also organize your information in terms of four categories that we have listed here. So it will be by main topic, key details, facts, and opinions. And this is why note taking is important. <laughs> and so you will be able to listen to certain ideas, capture the information. And as an instructor, the advice I tell students when note taking is to keep it simple. Write short forms, you can put initials, symbols, even pictures. And don't worry about writing complete sentences, spelling, grammar. No one will see your notes but you. So just make sure when you're writing, you understand your own information. Now, we have touched upon some of the strategies already, such as useful note-taking or listening careful to the main ideas. And as I mentioned before, answer every question. Even if you're not sure about the answer or you've missed the information from the audio, then guess. There are four possibilities and one will be correct. So one tip, that is shown here is to eliminate the incorrect answers. So usually there are two options that are completely wrong and you're left with two choices. So you will never lose marks for responding incorrectly. So select a response and it might be the right answer. Also, if there's a word you don't understand or a phrase, it's okay. Try to capture the main idea and don't focus on that word, or you may miss important information. So these are some tidbits of information that will help you for this section. So we're gonna move on to the reading section. Now here, this will also be multiple choice questions, just as in the listening, you will have four options to choose from, and it will take about an hour, and there are four parts to complete. Similar to the listening, you will have a countdown timer. And again, be sure to pay attention so that you can respond accordingly. Also, the passages will, will gradually be more difficult as you continue to the next parts. Now, this is the reading screen. And it's basically what you will see on the test. Now, the print is very small, so please don't try to read this. It is mainly to show you what the reading passage looks like. And usually you'll have the reading on the left-hand side of the screen and the questions on the right-hand side. This is convenient and it will help you go back and forth when you're trying to find information and responding to the questions. And what we have here is a sample of part one, which is an email. Now, again, don't try to read the information. It'll be too difficult. But what we will focus on is the strategies at the bottom. Now, you will have 11 minutes to answer 11 questions. So you really don't have too much time to read the entire passage and slowly read the information to respond to the questions. So in the case here, you will need to be quick and locate information efficiently. Take a few seconds of your time to even preview the screen and the length of the passage. So for example, here we have four paragraphs and two sets of questions. Also be aware of the timer. I know I keep repeating this all the time, but you need to know how much time you have left for every section. And 
we recommend here to skim the passage, looking for the information. And usually what would be best in this case here is to read the first sentence of each paragraph. You can read it quickly, take out important words or brief information, and this will give you an idea what that paragraph is about. And that will help you to respond to the questions later. Now, when you're moving on to the actual questions, read it carefully. Look at the information, see what they're asking, then go back to the passage. And again, you're going to be skimming for that information, but at least you might have an idea where to locate that information. And then you can quickly find the response to that question. For the uh, questions, you will notice that there is um, an arrow, and what you would need to do is click on that arrow, and you will have four options. So just be sure to read the question and the four options before you go back to the passage. Now, try to pay attention to the details, because usually they'll ask for specific information like the person, the location, the time, or something similar to that. And the question should give you an indication as to where the passage will be okay, in the paragraph. So in the listening section, you have to respond to every question. The same goes for the reading section. We are hoping you respond to every question. Now, if you don't have much time left, if you see that maybe there are a few seconds left and you still need to respond to two or three questions, guess quickly, put a response before your time is up. Again, there could be a possibility that you might get that answer correct. Okay, so now we're going back to these strategies. Again, some of the things we've already mentioned, but things that I wanted to highlight here is, again, look at the timer, know how much you have for each section. If you notice you don't have too much time, respond quickly and don't leave anything blank, which I keep repeating to everybody all the time. Read the information quickly, you're skimming, you just need to get the main idea to help you to respond to the questions. Read the questions carefully and that will guide you along. So hopefully with practice, you will be able to do this more effectively as well. Now we are moving on to the writing section. Now here you will have two writing responses, each with a word count of 150 to 200 words. Now, one is an email, and the other will be a survey, uh, a response survey. <laughs> you have about an hour to complete the section, and you'll be given background information, which we're gonna see in the next page. And this will help you to know what the situation is about, and it will help you understand what you need to write about. You will also have editing tools. So it's very similar to Word. Word obviously has more information, but you do have, for example, cut, paste, underline, bold, italicize. Now, these are all optional. So if you feel that this is something that you would like to use, by all means, you can use what, <laughs> what you have there. There is also an automatic word count to know how many words you're writing and that will be seen at the bottom of the page but most importantly which is the favorite for many many people is that we do have spell check so if there is a word that is spelled incorrectly it will be underlined in red and if you click on that word they'll give you a choice of options to choose from although this is very helpful we still recommend to double check your writing. You may come across a word that you didn't mean to write, but if it's spelled correctly, it will not be underlined. So we always recommend double check your information, reread re your paragraph or reread all the uh, information that you have written and be mindful of that. Because sometimes even when we type quickly, we might make a little 
error <laughs> of some sort, but if the word is spelled correctly, it will not be underlined. Okay, good. <laughs> so let's start off with the first section then. So in this task here, you will have 27 minutes to complete the email. And the background information here is on the left-hand side. So in the case here, even if you're not able to read the information, it's basically about a dinner reservation that you made, you had a terrible experience at the restaurant, and there was no manager to talk to. So in this case, you will need to understand this information before you start writing. And on the right-hand side, there are also instructions. Now here, the instructions will clearly state what you need to talk about. So in the case here, you will have, it says, for example, state what the problem is you had with the food that you ordered. So that will be one paragraph. The second one, it says complain about the service. That's another paragraph. So this is a very, very helpful guide for you to write your information and make sure to give enough detail so that we can uh, talk about this. Now, what will happen here is when you are writing this information, first you need to determine if it's formal or informal. So if the information you're talking for in the case here, for example, you're talking to a manager, you've never seen him before, you don't know this person, you'll probably use a little bit more formal information. So the way you write the email will be different uh, as opposed to writing an email to your best friend. And the words you use will be different. So word choice will be very important in this case. The tone will be very important. So there's some things that you need to be aware of even when you start writing. And in the case here, you're complaining about a service, but maybe on the test you might have um, a situation where you're inviting someone to a party or you're planning a trip with your family. So the situation will be different. So just be aware of what the context is so you know how formal or informal you're going to write that information, okay? So in the case here, you will not be using slang or informal vocabulary. Now, another thing, because you have three bullet points, that really basically helps you to organize your information. So again, each bullet point will be a paragraph, and that is a fantastic guide. And sometimes you will have four bullet points, but it really depends on the situation that you have. So focus on what you're writing, understand the information, and then you'll be able to respond to the question there. <laughs> And again, at the bottom, even though you can't really see it, but at the bottom, you will have the word count. So that will help you also to organize how much uh, information you're writing. Now, next section, task two. This is, it looks kind of similar to task one, but in the case here, it is a survey question. So it will include the background information. And in the case here, this one talks about uh, a small town and the city is asking you uh, as a resident for your opinion. So they have some green space available in the town and they're asking if they should use that space for a shopping center or if they should use that space for a recreational park. So. Now you have two choices and you're going to select one option, whichever you prefer. So there's no right or wrong answer to this. You will select one choice and then explain that choice. So usually the best thing in this case would be to select one where you can give more information. Now, when you are, are writing this, um, you will have details to add to it. <laughs> so when you're, when you're doing this, um, we're going to actually, 
let me <laughs> go on with this. I'm not going to spend too much time on this, but I think I'm just going to continue on just with the more important information. So let me just hop on to the strategies here so we don't take up too much time. <laughs> now, things to consider in general would be um, reading the information, understanding the information, taking a few, uh, a little bit of time at the beginning to brainstorm, organize that information, make sure you're writing uh, enough details, and then at the end, reread everything. Okay, make sure that you have, you give yourself enough time to check all the information that you've written. All right. And the next part is the speaking. Now, this would be very difficult to go through the entire uh, section because there are eight parts. But what's important in the speaking section is that it's the shortest section. So it takes about 15 to 20 minutes. And then you will have some. Um, questions that will have only context uh, or text, sorry, <laughs> you will only have a section with the text. And then there are some sections that will be text and an image. So this is something that you will notice. And this will be recorded. So your response you will have, depending on the section, 60 minutes, oh, sorry, <laughs> 60 seconds to talk or 90 seconds to talk. So there's only two sections for 90 seconds. The rest is much, much shorter. So just make sure when you are being recorded, try to respond from beginning to end. Give enough information, give enough details, and that will help you to move on to this one. Okay, so I'm gonna continue on for the next part. This is just a sample of the task two, which talks about your past and here you're expressing your opinions. You're following again the instructions. Make sure to understand what is are being uh, talked about, and then include a lot of details and examples for this. This one here is an example of an image with the text, and here you are talking to a friend that cannot see the image, and you're giving a descriptive. Uh, detailed information as to what is going on. You don't need to describe everything. Choose something that you can describe and then continue on and talk about where they are, what they're doing, and even how they're feeling. Like all that information will be very helpful for you to talk about this image. Okay, now we're going to go into the Prep. Okay, so this is the fun part. <laughs> when you open an account, the account is for free, you will be given two free practice tests. So the case here, the, the free practice test is a complete, there are two complete tests. So I would highly, highly recommend go through it, look at it, review it, because you'll be able to at least have an understanding and an idea as to how you are doing. Plus, for the reading section and for the listening section, at the end, it will be evaluated. So you will see how you're doing compared to the actual test. So if, for example, the reading section is over 38, then they'll give you an average of what you got over 38 but this is only for listening and reading sections. And then we have the podcasts, which I'm gonna show you a little bit later. We also have uh, seminars to attend to, and then we have some study tips. So I'm just gonna quickly go into that. So this one here, when you open an account, or actually when you register for the test, you will receive some free study products, which is the CellPip Accelerate. The great thing about this is that you will have over five hours of video content. You will have exercises to do, mini quizzes. So it will help you to prepare for the test. And then we have the um, webinars, sorry. <laughs> now these are live webinars. I would highly recommend that you go register for these webinars. They are completely free. And if you want to practice something very specific, so if your writing isn't as good as you would like it to be, you want to practice a little bit more, get more tips, more strategies, more information, this would be 
the perfect way to do it. So you can register for the writing section. And if you're aiming for a very high score, you can reg register for Writing Pro Target 9 Plus. So you have various options here. And we have these webinars every week. So take advantage of this because this is great information that you will receive. Plus, you can also ask questions to the instructor. So this is a YouTube um, live session that you can also attend. And we have great advice from different experts like Brandy here. She's one of our instructor experts. And they also have interviews with immigration agents, with even test takers and going through their experience. So there's quite a bit of great information here to learn from. And going on to the next section, the, the study tips. This only lasts five minutes a day. So if you don't have as much time to attend the webinars, this would be another alternative where they'll give you information that you can do on a daily basis. And then we have the podcast, which is fantastic. We have a lot of great uh, guest speakers here. And they'll talk about various topics. They could talk about Halloween, Christmas, um, you know, the weather. They'll talk about wonderful books to read, different podcasts to listen to. So they'll give you a lot of tips that will help you in your everyday practice. And then we have the uh, free prep, which is fantastic. Now, this is called the score comparison chart. Now, what's wonderful about this section is that you will have the opportunity to listen or read sample responses for the speaking section and the writing section. So if you would like to know what a level eight sounds like or a level 10 sounds like in the speaking section, you can listen to it because sometimes if you're responding to questions and then you do the test and you get a seven and you take the test again and you get a seven on the speaking and you don't know why, at least this will give you a different um, view on how people are responding to these questions. So you will hear, oh, this person got a level eight for this reason. And you will also have the examiner, the examiner's response about every section. So if the person got an eight, there will be a detailed response why that person got an eight. So it's fantastic. So when you, if you have the opportunity, go to the score comparison chart and listen to these responses. They are amazing. Okay, so now we are moving on and I will now give the floor to Yvonne. We're moving on to the paid products. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you so much, Anna. Um, I have, in fact, posted a couple of links um, directly in the chat that basically give uh, folks access to all of those materials and an outline um, of everything you mentioned, but also the available um, additional for purchase materials. And the reason why I did this is because they'll get the, um, the actual slide deck and they can also kind of go through that and understand what's available because I wanted to leave enough time for us to hear questions as well um, and basically bring it back to Riley and see if there are any pertinent questions that we can, uh, we can answer at this point. Amazing. Thank you guys so much for this uh, insightful presentation. A lot of amazing info in there. Um, really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to uh, explain these topics in details to us. So thank you so much. Um, we, we received a lot of good questions in chat. We're gonna try to get to as many of them as possible. Um, Ivan, I know it's a bit late in India, but if we go a bit over 12, is that fine with you or do you have a hard stop at, at 12? By all means, yes, please, let's go over it. And then, um, okay. yeah, I have a couple of comments to finish off at the end, so. Amazing, sounds good. And Anna, that's okay with you? Absolutely, yes. <laughs> Great. So I'm going to ask some of the great questions we had um, in chat. So I guess we can clarify this because um, Anna was kept on asking every, or telling everyone not to or to guess questions, not to leave questions blank. A few people in chat asked, um, do you get a negative mark for uh, a, 
wrong answer? Like, does it hurt you for getting it wrong? Or you always no. want to? <laughs> no, it doesn't. So that's why we always encourage people to respond to the questions because they're, even if it's incorrect, there won't be a deduction from that response nothing will be deducted. So it's best to respond to a question, even if it's incorrect, and continue on with the test. Amazing. And Abdul asked, um, can we listen to questions twice, or is it only played once? How many times can you listen to a question? I would love to say yes to that, but unfortunately, you only listen to the audio passage once. <laughs> Got it. Amazing. Um, a couple questions here about retaking uh, the test that we got. Are you able to retake one specific section only, or do you have to retake the test all at once? What's the process for retaking um, a self ed test? For the self ed test, you will need to do the full test again. So the cost will be the same, um, but and but there is an option. So. If there is a section, for example, the writing section, you feel that you did not, or maybe you did better than the score that you received, you are able to get that section evaluated. So it's a reevaluation, and the cost for that is $55. So if that's something that you would like to do, you have that alternative as well. Amazing. Um... Francesca asked, does your score improve if you answer more quickly? <laughs> Good question. <laughs> um, it's not really that your score improves. What will happen is that you finish the test faster. <laughs> so <laughs> many times when, when you start the test, everyone in the test room will start at the same time but that doesn't mean you will finish at the same time. So if you respond to some of the multiple choice questions faster, you will finish the test faster. And we've had cases where some people finished within one and a half hours, two hours, two and a half hours. But if you're the type of person who would prefer to stay the full amount of time, then it's the three hours. Amazing. Um, a couple of questions here along sort of the same line, um, which is, what test score should I aim for um, if I'm applying for permanent residence? Well, that's a, a, a big question there. And I, I would have to say that depends. <laughs> Each situation is different. So every person who is taking the test has a purpose. And if it's for immigration purposes, again, each individual person might need a specific score. They might need seven, they might need eight, nine, or 10. But uh, that really depends individually what um, score they would be required to have. So there's no pass or fail for this test, but there will be a minimum that they might need mm -hmm. to uh, apply for their permanent residency. Got it. And if I take the test and I'm unhappy with my score or my results, what steps do you suggest to take, to, you know, before I retake the next the test next time to uh, increase my score? So again, we have various options, but I'll let uh, Yvonne give some of the, <laughs> the information here. And, and thanks, Anna. And maybe you, your answer to this might be slightly different than mine, but uh, one of the things that we didn't cover at length is, again, the available free resources, but also the paid resources, which we actually have on the screen right now. So in other words, if you get to the point, and this is me speaking from my own experience, but I'll let Anna talk about this in greater detail. But if you're unhappy um, with the your first score, uh, it might be useful to actually spend an additional $25 for the general LS or $35 for the Celtic general. And the reason for that is you're gaining practice tests. 11 sets of those. Each come with two complete tests um, and also speaking and writing responses at multiple levels, instant results, um, and writing and speaking performance standards. I have heard from uh, test takers, including here uh, at this conference in India, that um, some people are faced with the question as to whether or not they need to be spending that additional amount 
directly when they start preparing. And that always comes hand in hand with the other question, of course, and that is how far in advance should I be studying? And again, the answer always varies, but literally it's as soon as you possibly can do start. And if you can, do invest um, in the additional practice tests because um, you can effectively train your own memory and response times and all of those uh, skills uh, and get ready. Amazing. Uh, a lot of questions here about where CELPIP is avail available to be taken. Um, China, Iran, Nigeria, Ghana, a lot of different people are asking if CELPIP is available in their country. Um, where should people go to check for test locations? Yeah, great question. I will pop it in the chat right now. And I think um, we actually pinned it directly at the very top. It's uh, cellpip.ca, find a test date. Um, but also, um, so once folks access this um, link, uh, they can select the location that's nearest to them. And that's going to populate a number of options. Um, and, and you of can course, also see that information in the screen. Sorry, Yvonne. <laughs> correct. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, please go ahead. No, no, I was just mentioning we do have that information on the screen so you could see that. Uh, Salpip.ca, mm -hmm. that's the website you would need to go to. And lastly, since we're talking about the screen, we did share a geographical map earlier in the presentation. So um, as soon as um, our audience gets the, um, the slides, you can always refer. Um, to the map just to get a sense of whether it's available in a particular country. Yeah. And uh, just to clarify again for everyone uh, that's watching live, we're going to send you the slides by email and the recording by email. So if there's any part of this webinar you want to rewatch or take a deep dive into, uh, you can do that uh, after you receive our email tomorrow. Um, amazing. So. Somebody asked if there's specific identification documents that you need to bring um, on the day of your test. In the case here, we would recommend to have um, a valid passport. Um, in some cases, there are other options like refugee claimant form, but it's if you're unsure about what document to use, it's always best to contact us. And the contact information is there as well. You can email us at info at cellpip.ca. Amazing. Um, a couple questions here, one from Paola and one from Afreen about the same topic. Can I go back to previous questions online to, to double check my answers or maybe edit my question? That's a great question. When you have completed one section and you decide to move on to the next page, you're unable to return to the other page. So it's always best to complete the information, make sure you have responded to all the questions, and then move on to the next section. Got it. Thanks. Um, is it possible to take the test on your mobile device or is it only on a laptop or desktop? When you're practicing, you can do it anywhere on any device. <laughs> but to do the actual test, you need to go to a test center. So they will have the computers available there for you. Right. So even though the test is administered on a computer, uh, you can't take it at home. You still have to click the link that we pinned in chat, find a test location near you, and, and, and go take it at one of those locations. Yes, that's correct. <laughs> Amazing. Um, if I don't agree with my score, how do I apply for reevaluation or what does that process look like? You are given actually about 90 days to uh, decide if you would like to do a reevaluation and you can request that in your own account. There will be a section when you open your account where you can click on reevaluation and then choose the sections you would like to have reevaluated. Amazing. Um, and, and how long are your, your self, is your self score valid for? Um, two years. <laughs> two years. Yes. And before we move on to um, from this, what I always find, and I think we've also um, shared it in the chat here, the signing in or creating an account 
would be a great first step for whatever, because as Anna keeps mentioning, a lot of the resources, a lot of the links um, that are um, pertinent to not just the prep, but also after the test are already there. So we've tried to make it um, as accessible as possible and only in the cases where you don't find a link directly in your account or your score report directly in the account, then there are ways to get in touch with us. But I would, again, encourage folks to get that process started um, earlier than um, rather than later. Okay, sir. Um, a couple of questions here is about the test formats. Um, people are asking if there's uh, a, I guess, gap or a break between test sections? Well, there isn't really a, a break, but if you, for example, while doing the writing section, you finish earlier, then you are able to take a bathroom break and then come back, but the time will continue. So if you do have a little bit of time left over, then you can take that break. If not, then you won't have too much time for that. Got it. And uh, a few questions here about um, CELPIP as compared to other language tests. Maybe you can speak about, I guess, what makes CELPIP stand out. I will let my colleagues start and then I'll, I'll jump in because I, I know I have more to say. <laughs> <laughs> and, and this is a great question because um, in all fairness, the answer to that question changes somewhat because um, we get all, we, we get to hear from a lot of test takers. So on the first hand, the first thing we hear is something that I mentioned earlier, and that is the um, almost lack of apprehension when they are taking the test without speaking directly to a human being. In other words, that um, speaking section gets recorded by a computer and it gets assessed later on. So folks prefer that rather than um, speaking directly to a human being, which may um, come with an added level of pressure or anxiety. So we hear that from test takers in terms of the very uh, structure of the test, um, which then ties in with the way I would answer that question from my own experience, and that is, CELPIP is different than other tests precisely because it is made in Canada, reflects the Canadian context very specifically, and in turn gives um, test takers an opportunity to understand what they're getting themselves into. It is very much um, a, a test that allows that clarity, um, even for people who have been within Canada to kind of um, rise to the occasion and understand what um, the language used within the country is uh, going to be. Um, and I don't know, maybe Anna has a more technical answer to um, to that question. Well, I, I know for, for some people, even in the writing section, because it has spell check for them, that makes a difference. <laughs> and so there are various things that could be different than other assessment tests, but Again, I, I've already mentioned this before, but when you do start the test, you're practically going at your own pace. So if you feel that there are sections where you're able to respond faster, then you might end up uh, finishing the test earlier. My, my colleague already mentioned all the great points, so I don't need to repeat that again. <laughs> Amazing. Um, and on that note, maybe I'll hand it back to Selpip to uh, finish up. W wonderful. Thank you so much once again, um, Riley and team and everyone joining us from all manner of places. Exceptionally grateful always to connect with such a diverse group. Um, the one thing, well, the few things that I will say in closing, and I'll pass it on to Anna for any final comments. We're very passionate about supporting our candidates, and we don't just say this. The level of support that we provide for people um, is, is, is part and parcel with the fact that we exist. In other words, we don't just want you to go and take a test. We want you to be very much prepared to take it. And, the, um, and we have a very strong cadence of webinars and prep materials that we, that we provide. Um, but apart from that, 
Um, the one uh, takeaway, if if I if there was any that I'd like folks to um, you know exit this this session with is again think of CELPIB as a great predictor for your success within the Canadian language environment. Uh, very specifically, how you operate, even if you have the um, requisite amount of experience within Canada, it is still a great tool to kind of prepare, get the right amount of, get the right score that's required for your particular application, but be confident uh, as a speaker within the Canadian context. Um, and again, many, many thanks to all of you and Riley and um, Anna, um, any final words on your end? <laughs> well, I think mainly for me, and I'm always thinking as an instructor is always to practice and prepare ahead of time. Don't wait to the last minute to prepare because sometimes that will add more stress when in the test room. But if you're able to do this beforehand, you'll have more confidence and you'll understand what is expected from you on the test day. And I think one, one, one time somebody had mentioned, they made a comparison about doing your driving test, that you still need to know the rules of the road before you drive. So in the case here, even if you're a native English speaker, it's always best to understand the format, go through the test, look at it, practice it, and be a bit more confident when you are taking the test. So that's my two cents for today. <laughs> so all the best to everyone. Best of luck if you do need to take the test and I hope your journey is successful. Great, thanks so much, Aaron and Ivan. Uh, we really appreciate you joining us and doing this in-depth sort of presentation on, on, on CELPIP. Um, a lot of value for, for us and our users. So thank you so much for joining. Um, a couple housekeeping notes before we end this webinar. Please look out for the slides and um, the recording of this webinar that will be sent to you by email. Um, hopefully we'll send out that email by tomorrow after we export this webinar's video. Um, if you have questions or follow-up questions from this webinar, please either reply to the email that you get or send them directly to CELPIP um, at that email uh, that's on the screen right now, info at selflip.ca. We're gonna share the links um, that were discussed about in this chat in the email that we sent to you. Um, and we thank you everybody for joining, um, especially if you're staying up late, like Ivan is to, uh, to watch this webinar. So thanks so much, um, really appreciate it. And I hope everyone has a good evening, morning or afternoon. Thank you. Thanks thank so you. much, Riley, take care. Hi, everyone. Thanks, Ryan. Take care.